Hobart School of Welding Technology presents Training in Gas Tungsten Arc Welding Pipe and Tubing. Topic number nine, lecture discussion. Pipe weld quality. Objective, to become familiar with improper welding variables and techniques which lead to poor quality pipe welds and the methods of corrective action. A quality weld is produced through proper adjustment of the welding equipment, proper preparation of the joint, and proper utilization of techniques by a skilled welder. The materials, equipment, adjustments, and joint design are normally listed in a joint welding procedure. This joint welding procedure is a document which indicates that quality weld results can be expected if the method for producing the weld is in accordance with the procedure. Quality is verified through mechanical testing of a test weld produced in conjunction with the procedure. Now, this is called procedure qualification. The mechanical tests required for qualification are established by the welding code used. The welder's skill is determined by producing a weld according to the procedure. The weld must be able to pass mechanical testing established by the welding code used. Now, this is commonly called performance qualification. To pass a performance qualification test, the welder must be familiar with the differences between a quality weld and a poor weld, and to be able to adjust the welding parameters or technique in order to produce a defect-free weld. One of the most common defects deals with penetration. Joint penetration is the amount that a weld extends from its face into the joint. This does not include face or root reinforcement. In some cases, penetration may be insufficient. That is, the penetration is less than required. This problem may occur because the welding current is too low, the travel speed is too fast, or the electrode is contaminated. On the root side, the weld metal does not usually fuse into the root edges, and the puddle becomes narrow. The edges of the joint on the root side are not melted. This problem may also result from too narrow a root opening or too large a root face. A low welding current or fast travel speed may also result in an overly convex weld bead. This produces deep valleys along each side of the bead, which are difficult to penetrate during the second pass. This problem can also result from not enough side-to-side -side motion of the torch. This prevents the weld metal from flowing into the bevel for proper fusion. The welder should beware of overcorrecting when trying to avoid this problem. Too wide a side-to-side -side motion will produce undercut and excessive melting of the joint edges. Another defect resulting from improper current, travel speed, and joint design is excessive root reinforcement. This problem is most common in the flat position portion of pipe welding as the force of gravity causes the weld metal to sag towards the root. Excessive root reinforcement is caused by traveling too slowly or setting the current too high. This results in excessive melting of the joint edges and a larger weld puddle is produced. The greater the puddle size, the greater the chance of sagging of the bead, as shown here on the root side. Excessive root reinforcement may also result from too wide a root opening. If the filler metal is held stationary in the joint, it becomes difficult to fill the wide root spacing. This may result in holes in the root pass. This illustrates the importance of good joint alignment for producing quality welds. If the joint is slightly wide 
it will be necessary to apply additional filler metal to the puddle. This can be done by pushing the filler rod into the puddle to slightly increase the amount of molten metal. The force of gravity has a different effect on large weld puddles in the overhead position. Here the weld puddle tends to sag away from the root, causing internal root concavity. On the root side, the bead becomes wide and melts a large part of the joint edges. Internal root concavity occurs for the same reasons as excessive root reinforcement, too much current, too slow a travel speed, or too large a root opening. The welder should notice how the puddle sinks and then pulls out. Another problem or defect which is related to high welding current is called undercut. Undercut is defined as grooves melted into the base metal adjacent to the toe or root of a weld and left unfilled. Undercut occurs due to a high welding current, but normally occurs in conjunction with a long arc length or a contaminated electrode. In the case of a long arc length, the arc stream is wide and causes excessive melting of the joint edges, which produces the grooves. The filler metal can only fill a certain amount of the joint, and this leaves the grooves unfilled. Too much side-to-side -side motion can also cause undercut in the same manner as a wide arc stream, but this is more related to welder technique. A contaminated electrode has the same effect since the pattern of the arc stream is increased by the contamination. When the electrode is contaminated by touching the tip in the puddle, small particles of tungsten may become trapped in the weld. These are commonly called tungsten inclusions and may also result from excessive amperage or an excessive high frequency setting. These inclusions can be reduced or eliminated by using a thoriated or zirconium tungsten. Also, directly related to welder technique, is an uneven root bead. Erratic travel speed or erratic filler metal feed may cause this problem. This happens commonly when the welder is becoming accustomed to the cup walking motion. If the cup becomes nicked or develops a rough outside edge, it may be difficult for the welder to keep the torch moving at a steady rate. Nicks cause the cup to catch or hesitate as it is walked on the bevel. The outside surface of the cup must be smooth for this kind of motion. Sometimes a fine sandpaper is used to smooth the outside edge of a new nozzle to improve its walking characteristics. Uneven root beads may also result from an uneven root opening or root face. The joint preparation should be as consistent as possible in accordance with the joint specifications. This problem is actually a combination of excessive and insufficient penetration. When the root opening is wide, the penetration is greater, and where the root face is wide, penetration lessens. Porosity is the result of small gas pockets which become trapped within the weld or on its surface, called surface or subsurface porosity, depending on its location. With the gas tungsten arc process, a dark appearance is normally associated with porosity due to oxidation of the weld bead. Both porosity and dark appearance are caused by too low a shielding gas setting and can also be caused by impure gas or the wrong shielding gas. Sometimes an oxidized weld bead can result without accompanying porosity. This is usually the result of too long an arc length or too much push angle. Oxidation can occur in the weld crater if the weld is not purged thoroughly after welding. When the arc is broken, the torch should be returned to the crater area in order to protect the weld with shielding gas while it is solidifying. 
too long an electrode stick out can also cause the electrode to become contaminated when the arc is broken. Bad tie-in can result when restarting the arc. This usually occurs when the weld current is set too low or if filler metal is added before the crater is hot enough to allow complete fusion. Poor tie-in on the restart can also occur if the tack weld is not preheated before the bead is begun. The arc should be started about one quarter inch from the end of the tack weld with the filler rod held in control. Another cause of poor tie-in is not properly fusing into tack welds. When approaching a tack weld, the filler rod should be raised, allowing the arc to fuse and penetrate into the tack weld. The rod is then removed and the torch is moved past the end of the tack weld. A properly deposited gas tungsten arc weld on pipe should fully penetrate into the joint without incomplete fusion. The weld should be free of overlap and undercut. And the root should blend smoothly into the base metal.